teach me how to be a first time real estate investors. Here are my top three secrets for that exactly. So I promise you, it'll be worth it. Good day, Toronto. Welcome to another episode of Prime Property. So glad you could join me here today. I am going to give you my top three tips on how to become a great real estate investor, especially, actually specifically, for you as a first time real estate investor. So without further ado, number one, you have to know why you are getting into real estate investing. This one's so important, okay? This means that you have to know exactly why you're doing it because it sounds super basic at first, but I can tell you that it's the most important thing ever in this path because I've been doing this for long enough and those who don't have a strong enough reason, like a strong why for why they're investing, generally always end up losing money in some way, shape or form because when the going gets tough, and trust me, <laughs> poo poo is gonna hit the fan and it's gonna get rough. You're gonna quit. And when you quit, you sell out a bad time and you lose money, right? That's generally what happens. And I see this way too often. So, real estate investing isn't easy or is it sexy, even though some people make it seem like sexy because it's been very, very popular in the last five years. But nobody gets up each day and says, Ooh, yeah, can't wait to be a landlord. Nobody, right? If you are that person, let me know. But I haven't met someone. But what being a landlord does is it gives you options financially, right? So when you have options financially, you're able to get your time back. You can buy your time back and do whatever you want with it. That's the whole concept of financial freedom from my perspective. This is what I tell to all my first time investors who work with me. Poo poo is going to hit the fan at some point and you need to be able to tough it out. So here's kind of like, the general emotional roller coaster that I think most of my first time investor clients that work with me go through, right? You first talk to me and you're like, oh my God, the potential for real estate is crazy. You're like way up here. Then when you start looking and you have to start competing and the numbers don't work, you're like, oh my God, that sucks. And then after that, you buy your first property, you get under contract, you're like, woohoo, it's a roller coaster back up here, right? And then when you have to actually close the property, you're like, oh my God, that's a lot of money. And then when you actually close the property, you're like, woohoo, fantastic, I own the property. Then you realize you have no tenants. You're like, oh my God, that's gonna be the end of the world. And then when you actually get your first and last, you're like, woohoo, they're moving in. And then when your tenants call you for the first time, you're like, oh my God, this is the end of the world. And it's our job and our team's job to just compress all of that because we see that roller coaster of emotion all the time. Like I have a joke running with my clients where it's like, when you do this enough, it's kind of like going grocery shopping, right? It's just, it's just, you know what to expect, right? But if it's your first time and you go through the emotional roller coasters of going up and down, up and down, that's gonna get to you. And that's why I say poo poo's gonna hit the fan at some way, shape, or form, up the up here or the down here. And you have to have the mental fortitude and the mental toughness to kind of just stick it out. Because when you stick it out, the reward at the end of it is like a pot of gold and it's worth it. But if you don't stick it out and you sell at some way between this roller coaster of emotion and you kind of sell at a bad time in the market, bam, you're out with a lot of money because transacting real estate is super expensive. That's kind of what I'm trying to explain to you. You need to know your why so that when those times happen, you can be like, that's why I'm doing it. I'm going to make sure I get there. That's why you need to know it. If you think I sound crazy, I'm not because like you have to remember, we've done this a lot and like we've seen a lot of things. So we always tell our clients, like, look, when poo poo hits the fan, we got your back, you're our clients. So if you want to work with our team through this crazy emotional roller coaster and you want us to compress the highs and lows for you, you can book a call with me using the link right here. It's www.chatzen.com. You just gotta remember like, cause we've done it so often, we've seen most of the stuff. We're like, yeah, we got your back. We'll tell you who to talk to to figure it out because that's what experience gets you. I didn't understand it when I was younger, but now I do, now that I'm older, <laughs> crazy. Number two, know your strategy and stick to it. You can't get to number two without number one. This is why us saying number one is so important. If you don't know the reason why you're doing this, don't invest in real estate at all. You won't know what is actually the optimal strategy to achieve what you're trying to accomplish, whether it's your goals, retire early, build a nest egg, have you know a family, or sorry, have a property for each of your kids, whatever it is. Because everyone tells me they want financial freedom, but if you don't know what financial freedom looks like, how do you know how much passive income you need? Do you know which path to go down? How are you gonna get there? How am I gonna tell you how to get there if you don't even know where there is, right? There's a ton of strategies in real estate investing. You could buy and hold, you could do the popular burr now, the pre-con, you got condos, you got wholesaling, you got flipping, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? 
And this is before you pick your location, like your geography and which city you want to invest in. That's why you need to understand the economics and the fundamentals of kind of like each strategy before you even start executing on it. And even before that, you need to understand why you're doing it because you don't know what strategy to execute on unless you know why you're doing it. See, see, see. So don't just go in blindly just because you feel like, you know, there's a gold rush. There's not. Right. That's exactly how you lose money because you listen to people that are all like, I made a ton of money. Right. And you jump in. Right. Just don't. And for the love of God, stop flipping pre-con condos assignment. Seriously, stop. There's no money to be made. I need to make this very clear. Again, there's no money. Check out this video. Anyone who tells you to uh, buy a pre-con and sell it later, especially on TikTok, get out of there. Just stop, stop, right? It makes no sense, okay? It's the biggest scam ever. And I will leave it at that. Now, this is the type of real estate content you enjoy. Make sure you help us spread the knowledge by smashing that like button and subscribing to the Prime Propso channel because every single week we make awesome content like this to help you have an information asymmetry, a real estate information advantage so that you can make money in real estate. And a lot of the times we'll talk you down from like stupid things like pre-con assignment as well. So if you want to work with us, whether you want to buy, sell, or invest, you can book a call to kind of get a chat about your specific situation and your needs by using the link right here. It's www.chatwithzan.com. Number Number three, slow and steady wins the race. You don't need to feed your ego about, you know, having the most amount of doors out there. You also don't need to build like a giant real estate empire to kind of get to your financial freedom goals. But if you want to, you most definitely can. But you have to remember this one thing. Just one property can change your life. Literally just one, right? Just an FYI, right? Like your primary residence is not an investment. So that one property, while it can change your life and where you live, it's not gonna change your life financially most of the time. So if your primary residence goes up in value and you have to sell it, you have to remember you're buying in that same market dynamics. And if you're moving into a bigger house, it generally means you have a bigger mortgage, which just means that you're moving laterally and increasing your mortgage. So when I say investment property, I mean one investment property where you have all tenants living in there and no one you know, right? I mean, if your family's in their watch or whatever, right? And they pay you rent. But if they don't pay you rent, no, 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 doesn't count. And the reason why one property can change your life is because when you hold on to that one property for a long time, your wealth accumulates very slowly in the background. But at some point, you kind of set it and forget it. And you're like, oh, it went up really, really high because your wealth increases like a hockey stick. It goes like this on a chart, right? It's slow at first, but it, over time it compounds and compound interest is the way you go. And that's how you build massive, massive wealth, right? So one investment property after 30 years when it's fully paid off is easily a retirement plan. And this is even before any appreciation we add in. And as you know, real estate in Toronto goes up 6% a year on average, not counting the last two years. Or one investment property for your kid, you know, buy, buy when they're young so that they can actually you know, afford something or you can use that to fund their tuition. I think it's better than RESP. My opinion, don't take it you know, for financial advice. It's just to help them out. And remember, you can do this slow and steady because that's how you win the race, like the hare versus the tortoise. You wanna be the tortoise, not the hare, and jump in to get rich quick. Real estate's not a get rich quick scheme, it's a get rich slow scheme. Now, whether you wanna call it a scheme or not, it's up to you, right? But it's get rich slow, right? And there you have it. Those are my top three things you need to know when you're becoming your first time real estate investor. Those are three points that may sound really kind of arbitrary if you think about it and you're like, oh, Zen, this is all BS, right? But it's not. When you've worked with the amount of investors that I have, you can see the ones who are successful and the ones who are not for obvious reasons. And I can see the underlying common theme in the ones who are successful, which are number one, have a strong why. Number two, know your strategy and stick to it and don't have, you know, like a shiny object syndrome. And number three, they need to have long term horizons, not short term horizons. So if you're looking for some guidance as a first time investor on kind of how to get into the market or what strategy works for you and kind of how to have a long term horizon, I can help you with that. But if you call me, make sure you understand why you're getting to real estate investing. I can't help you with that. I have no idea why, right? So if you do want to call, call me about number two and number three, you can use the link right here on the screen. It's www.chatozan.com. Until next time, your move, your future. See ya. Now that you're done watching this one, how about this one? Oh, you know what? This one's good too. Ooh, this one's really good. You know what? Just watch the most.